Hey guys, so last night was the first time in a while I went to a dance gathering outside. There weren't many of us, but it was so nice to dance again. And one thing I noticed is that to see a girl smiling because she's enjoying her dance with you, it's so fucking beautiful. I, like, I, felt, I, I just felt like if there's nothing else I could enjoy in this life, seeing those faces, those eyes, those smiles, that made it worth it. Because when we dance, we are not able to hide how we really feel. I can't remember which choreographer it was, but she said, the body never lies. And when I'm dancing, I'm feeling breath. I'm feeling body tension. I'm able to read emotions without the girl telling me how she's feeling, simply because I can see and I can feel it. And this is a good segue into what I wanted to talk about today, which is openness and honesty. Now, a lot of people think that being open with someone requires very, very high levels of trust, but I would suggest that this level of trust wasn't really uh, unusual in our history. For example, we grew up in tribes where we had to be pretty open with everyone. We knew everyone. We were in groups of 30 to 40 people. So to be open and sharing with other people is very much in our evolution for millions of years. But in our modern society, it does feel like a risk as well as being more organized towards progress, we are also more organized towards manipulation, towards using someone's vulnerabilities against them. And I think when someone is open, they can often be perceived as being weak or being naive or over-trusting. And sometimes that is the case. But why risk it at all? Why not just keep our cards close to our chest and go throughout life without really giving much of ourselves away. Well, first of all, I think we really need to connect to other human beings. Like I said, it's, it's in our nature. But also, when we connect with other people, we get to see more of ourselves. Like, I can't even completely explain it, but when I have been in deep conversations with other people or in a dance with another person and I get to see a perspective that is not my own, I get to know my perspective more. It's kind of like when I learnt languages, I guess. I have learnt a lot of different languages in my life and the more I learn of other languages, the more I understand my own. But I think it's important to understand that everyone is on a different page, everyone has their own journey, everyone has their own process. Not everyone is going to be able to or want to open up and connect in the same way. Some people are very open, some people are very closed. And it depends on their mood, time of day, what's going on in their lives, lots of things. And also, opening up can have some negative sides. So for some people, they use openness as a weapon, as an armor as a way of dominating the conversation by making it all about themselves. And I'm sure this a lot of the times comes from very narcissistic points of view, but I also think sometimes when someone is hurting a lot and we live in a society without adequate channels for people to express themselves or to feel like they have someone to call upon, they can end up opening up to everyone and for people to take on board more emotional load than they are prepared for, it can feel like someone has run up to them with a huge gaping wound and they've just bled all over them. It's not a pleasant experience. So I think while it's good to have sympathy for people who uh, are hurting and that we should be there for them to whatever extent that we can be, I also think it is our responsibility to state our boundaries and to redirect that person to someone who can genuinely help if we cannot. I think it's important to realize that 
the effect is the same, whether it comes from a malicious or a non-malicious point of view, it still makes people uncomfortable. It still pushes people outside of their comfort zones. And if that is not the reason why you're opening up, then become aware of the effect it has on other people. I mean, I say this as someone who has done this mistake myself. There have been points in my life where I've been in a lot of pain and I've bled on people like this. And it wasn't good of me. But going back to the positive side of opening up and learning about other people, learning about ourselves, can we really be honest with other people before we are honest with ourselves? I mean, how many of us really deep down know that we do things like suppress inconvenient truths? Like Donald Rumsfeld talked of, uh, just before the Iraq war, of uh, known knowns, things that you know that you know, uh, known unknowns, things that you know you don't know, unknown unknowns, things completely outside the realm of your knowledge and you're not even aware that you don't know them. And Slavoj Žižek, uh, the philosopher, added another category to this uh, and he called it unknown knowns. And these are things that we know but we behave as if we don't. Uh, I can think of one common example being when we see traits in someone that we have a crush on or in a relationship with that we would usually treat as red flags because we really like this person or we really want the relationship to continue, we behave as if they're not there. The writer of the Narnia series, C.S. Lewis, wrote a book called Till We Have Faces. Now this is a retelling of the Greek myth of Cupid and Psyche. And in it, he asks the question through the voice of uh, Psyche's older sister, Uriel, why don't the gods let us see them face to face? And the answer arrived at in the book is because we are two-faced. And there's an ending, which I can't quote word for word here, but it's really, for me, it was the pinnacle of the book. And in it, the Uriel says something like, my teacher used to tell me that to say exactly what you mean, no more and no less, is the art and joy of words. But I find that a glib saying now. When finally, the words which you've uttered at the center of your heart for years, idiot-like, again and again, when those words are drawn out of you, you will not talk of the joy of words. I now see clearly why the gods don't speak to us, nor let us answer. How can they see us face to face until we have faces? So whatever our thoughts on how much honesty and openness we expect from other people, I think it's also really important to understand that we need to expect honesty and openness from ourselves to ourselves. I think honesty and being ourselves is in some ways the greatest act of rebellion because not only does the external world put restrictions on ourselves that stop us from being ourselves, very often we put restrictions on ourselves from being ourselves to ourselves. Can we sit in silence and ask ourselves difficult questions? Can we be prepared for answers that we don't really want? You know, I think most of the world is running from itself. I would encourage you, don't run. Look into the eyes of yourself and be honest. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.